the top of the cage. In this video, we're going to be discussing Red Dead Redemption 1. We're going to be discussing the gameplay, the story, the characters, and some of my personal thoughts mixed in as well. Uh, I might be all over the place in this video, but stick with me, bear with me. I think it's going to be well worth it. But with all that out of the way, let's dive right in. So you all knew I, I, I had to play Red Dead Redemption 1 since I enjoyed the second one so much. And plus, Red Dead 2 is a prequel to Red Dead 1. Starting off with the gameplay, it was solid. I enjoyed how this game plays. It's really similar to the second one, which was it made it easier to go back and play it now in 2023. Um, it did surprise me just how much this game was like RDR2 in the way that it was it slowed things down quite a bit. And that was always something that stood out to me about RDR 2, especially when starting it for the first time. The game can sometimes be extremely slow at times. I like how both these games did a great job with the build up to major events and not just shoving stuff in your face all the time. It feels more real this way too. Sure, a lot of RDR 1's beats are just meeting up with a new character, maybe helping them out with a personal quest, and then taking care of the big bad of that point in the story. But getting back to the gameplay. RDR1 has a lot of fun things to do in its world. Of course, shooting criminals is still a fun time. Uh, though I must say, I cannot stand herding cattle in this game. Was it just me or did they do this way too many times in the game? I didn't mind it the first time because, you know, I liked how it was similar to the end of the second game with John Marston living on the, the ranch. But they did eventually start like overusing that mission design and it got kind of annoying. There was maybe like one or two other times that I didn't mind it as I thought it made sense, but for the most part, kind of annoyed me. And of course, just messing around in this game is always going to be fun and hilarious to do. You asked for this lady. Nice mustache, by the way. Hello there. Howdy there. Hey, mister. Hey, partner. Good to see you, sir. Anyways, I also want to give a shout out to the characters. All the characters in the Red Dead games are just so full of charm and life, and they're just so interesting to meet and interact with, and they have excellent voice performances as well. So this might be a good segue to talk about the story, uh, which for me was the main reason why I wanted to play Red Dead 1. I need to give you all a spoiler alert now. If you're really sensitive to story spoilers of any kind and eventually want to experience this one, for yourself then maybe click off the video for now and come back after you've finished the game for yourself but with all that out of the way that ending was phenomenal it was so amazing uh, i think it's funny how i literally started out talking about the ending like right off the bat but it was just the thing that just is going to stick in my mind the most when i walk away from this game and that is what i enjoy so much about rdr1 uh it's it's how it portrays reality in its story and characters so well you know because like in real life people are generally bad like they're not gonna like try to come up and shoot you just randomly i hope but it does kind of paint this picture of, you know, if you give people power and the ability to do something and they, you know, think they can get away with it, generally they're gonna do it. And I like how the Red Dead games don't shy away from that sort of, uh, the darker side of humanity, if you will, both in the villains and even the quote unquote heroes. It's kind of everybody, you know, does bad things. It just feels uh, sort of more real in that way. And that's what I really enjoy about the themes within both these games, because even a game like RDR1 just feels like such a perfectly thematic work of art, which is not something I ever thought I would say about really either Red Dead games. I mean, literally just look at this box art. Whenever I saw this art, I never thought this game had something meaningful to say within its story. You just wouldn't have guessed that. And this is kind of a side note, but I'm actually a huge sucker for stories and media like this that, you know, kind of portray even the heroes is not always like morally good. Um, that's why I like things like Walking Dead and Planet of the Apes. Uh, for similar reasons. And really, these are the kind of stories that I find the most interesting to experience and to discuss. They did my boy Bill dirty. Maybe it was just me, but I feel like he wasn't in the story nearly enough. Like he didn't get enough screen time. And whenever he was there, he was always like super far away or like his face was obstructed. And we like just didn't even get to see him that much. 
Maybe that was intentional and there's some extra meaning behind that, but that's just how I felt about it. I felt like they just didn't use them enough. Um, but you know, maybe it's just playing into that idea of just life not being perfect or scripted because it's obviously not. In a way, it maybe makes the story feel more real. And I also got to talk about Dutch. He wasn't in this game very much, which is kind of sad because he was like one of the best parts about RDR2. Uh, but still, he had some amazing moments. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change. We can't fight gravity. We can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see? Then I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed, John. All I have to say is the voice actor who portrayed Dutch in these games, his name is Benjamin Davis. Props to this guy. I, I know nothing about him other than his him working as Dutch in both these games, but props to him, he did a phenomenal job with this character. I'm also a huge fan of John Marston in this game. I like how it really fleshes him out more than the second one did. His story of being unable to escape his past and having to travel around taking out his old gang was really cool. And I also like how the story, is, we don't actually know what John's doing from the start. Like when the game starts up, he's being escorted to a train by two government agents and you're just not sure what they're doing or what the goal is. And I like how you kind of piece things together throughout the story until you know you finally get what everything was about. Um, it really subverts your expectations. That's what I like so much about the story. Um, because again, bringing up the box art, just look at this. When you see this guy, you don't think he's a family man, but he is. And I think that's what I like so much about John as a character is that he really is a very, th th there's a lot of human aspects to him that you can relate to, you know, and that's what I find so appealing about him as a character. And also he really does subvert your expectations because he's nothing how I expected him to act all these years seeing the, this box art. Not at all what I expected. Um, and again, props to his voice actor, because I'm telling you, the voice acting in both RDR games is some of the best voice acting I've ever experienced in any game. His name is Robert, I think it's Whit Whitloff? Withoff? Something like that? <laughs> I'm putting it on the screen so you all see. Props to you as well. Did a phenomenal job. Oh, and man, that ending. When John died, I was deeply disturbed. It was so scary watching this beloved character die in the way he did. Like... It was, it was just one of the scariest things I've seen in a video game. And finally, there's a sort of secret yet official ending where Jack, all grown up, goes after Ross to get revenge for Ross taking advantage of his dad, Jack's dad, and uh, then just, you know, brutally murdering him. What I liked about this is that it again had something meaningful to say because it was the idea that John could not escape his past no matter how hard he tried and he just wanted to leave it behind. He literally even says that in the story. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. He could not get away from it, though. And so his son, Jack, essentially has to inherit that life because it was just something he just couldn't really get away from. You know, maybe there could have been like an alternate ending where Jack didn't do this, but I don't know. I feel like I liked how there was an, uh, an optional, like, you know, two different endings you could get in this regard because, you know, it has something specific to say and that's what Jack would have done. So I actually kind of like that. And really everything about this ending has me so interested to see where they could take a potential Red Dead Redemption 3 story if it does end up following Jack Marston. I just think there's so much potential there and who knows, maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. Oh my gosh, but holy cow, uh, with all that, I think I've talked about everything I want to in this video, but gosh dang, like these games left me in utter shock. I 
really did not expect them to leave such an impact on me after finishing them. I wish they one day will make like a TV show adaptation of both these games because I actually think it would work very well uh, as a show. Regardless, this game as well as its sequel have definitely left their mark on gaming but also have left their mark on me personally as well. Some of the best stories in all of gaming, maybe not the best I've experienced, but definitely some of the best without a doubt. But with all that being said, I will digress for now. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you didn't, I thank you for watching this long. Don't forget to engage the subscribe button if you wanna see more of me in the future. And with all that being said, I will see you all in the next video. God bless. I wish I knew